Thank you for joining us this evening. We're glad that you have chosen to be a part of this online streaming Bible study. I think you will enjoy what you're going to experience. You'll be able to sing along, and then we'll have a lesson presented by Dr. Brad Harab, followed with prayer and also singing. So please join in tonight and enjoy our study time and devotional time together. Thank you. Each day I'll do, each day I'll do a golden deed, a golden deed by helping those, by helping those who are in need, who are in need. My life on earth, my life on earth is but a span, is but a span. And so I'll do, and so I'll do the best I can. The best I can. Life's evening sun, life's evening sun is sinking low, is sinking low. A few more days, a few more days, and I must go, and I must go to meet the deeds, to meet the deeds that I have done, that I have done. Where there will be, where there will be no setting sun, no setting sun. To be a child, to be a child of God each day, of God each day. My light must shine. My light must shine along the way. Along the way. I'll sing His praise. I'll sing His praise while ages roll. While ages roll. And strive to help. And strive to help some troubled soul. Some troubled soul. Life's evening sun. Life's evening sun is sinking low. Is sinking low. A few more days. A few more days. And I must go. And I must go to meet the deeds. To meet the deeds that I have done. That I have where there will be, where there will be no setting sun, no setting sun. The only life, the only life that, will endure that will endure is one that's kind, is one that's kind and good and pure. And good and pure. And so for God, and so for God, I'll take my stand. I'll take my stand. Each day I'll live. Each day I'll lend a helping hand. Life's evening sun, life's evening sun is sinking low, is sinking low. A few more days, a few more days, and I must go, and I must go to meet the deeds, to meet the deeds that I have done, that I have done. Where there will be, where there will be no setting sun, no setting sun. I'll help someone, I'll help someone in time of need, in time of need, and journey on. And journey with rapid speed. I'll help the sick and poor and weak. And words of kindness to them speak. Life's evening sun is sinking low. A few more days. A few more days. And I must go to meet the deeds that I have done. Where there will be no setting sun, no setting sun. While, going down, while going down life's weary road, life's weary road. I'll, try to lift I'll try to lift some travelers low, some travelers low. I'll, try to turn I'll try to turn the night to day, the night to day. make flowers bloom, make flowers bloom along the way Life's evening sun, life's evening sun is sinking low, is sinking low. A few more days, a few more days, and I must go, and I must go to meet the deeds, to meet the deeds that I have done. Where there will be, where there will be no setting sun, no setting sun. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wondered how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. 
For me it was in the garden, He prayed not my will but thine. He had no tears for his own griefs, But sweat drops of blood for mine. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful, And my song shall ever be. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. In pity angels beheld him and came from the world of light to comfort him in the sorrows he bore for my soul that night. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. He took my sins and my sorrows, he made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary, and suffered and died alone. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. When with the ransomed in glory, His face I at last shall see, T'will be my joy through the ages To sing of His love for me. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful, And my song shall ever be. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. You know, evil, pain, and suffering are one of the things that lots of folks struggle with when it comes to God. Why would God allow evil, pain, and suffering? You know, why, why would God allow bad things to happen to good people. Let me first and foremost point out to you that was not God's plan. And I think sometimes when tragedy, when pain hits our life, we, we, we don't really stop and think about the fact that God's original plan was that man would be with him in the garden. And yet sin wrecked that plan. So we live in a fallen world today, and there is pain, there is suffering. So the question then is, okay, why, why would God allow that today? Well, let me give you a couple of reasons to think about, some of which you, you're going to quickly agree with. One or two, you may think, ah, oh, I, I don't really like that answer. Like the first one, some of the pain and suffering in your life is actually probably your own fault. We don't like that one. But the reality is God created man with free will. And because of that free will, that means that if somebody wants to go out and, and drink alcoholic beverages, get behind the wheel of a car, he crashes that car into a telephone pole or, or maybe another vehicle. The pain and the suffering that come from that are a direct result of his bad decision making, his free will and ultimately, it's his fault. The second reason we like a whole lot better, and that is some of the pain and suffering that's out there today is actually because of previous generations. You know, previous generations made decisions, did things that people are paying for even today. Let me give you a couple of examples. Asbestos. Now, there was a time where we believed asbestos was a great insulator. We filled schools with it, office buildings, and then we discovered it can cause cancer. Or how about something like lead paint 
or DDT. You know, we know that there are, are things that we used in the past, chemicals that we used in the past, that there are people who are paying for it today. One that is close to my heart is, is a chemical substance called Agent Orange. Works great for killing plants. We actually shipped it over 50 gallon barrels overseas to the Vietnam War because our, our soldiers were having trouble seeing the, the Viet Cong up, up in trees. Well, guess what? It worked well. Agent Orange killed all the foliage. The problem is our troops were using those same barrels to cook out of, to bathe in. They would do various things and they were getting exposed to this same chemical that we know today is mutagenic. It, it, it can actually mutate your DNA. And so we have a lot of veterans today who are suffering because of decisions from past generations. The ultimate example is Adam and Eve. You know, if you think about, had they not messed up in the garden, where would we be today? The third one is natural laws. There are natural laws that God put in place that we count on today. Laws like the law of momentum or the law of gravity that if you stop and think about it for just a moment, if you fall from a high place, the law of gravity may result in your death. Or if a child walks out in front of a bus, the laws of momentum may bring about their death. Doesn't mean that God doesn't love that child. Simply means the laws of momentum that again have been in place since the creation of the world are gonna result in that child's death. Now, could God save that child? Absolutely, or else he wouldn't be God. But let me point out to you, the Bible gives the indication that, that God is not a respecter of persons. And so if he saves that child, then what about all the other people who find themselves in similar situations? So some of the pain, some of the suffering that we have around us today is because of laws that were put into place all the way back at the creation account. Number four, and again, this one you may not buy right off, and that is some suffering, some pain is actually beneficial. You say, I don't know, Brad, I, I don't want pain. Well, imagine if you will, that you're finally able to, to worship with your church family again. You, you, you're, in fact, you're having a, a potluck or fellowship meal. Now, I live in the South, and so a lot of the food that is taken to those, those potluck dinners is fried. In fact, if you're living above the Mason-Dixon line and, and you hear this message, let me just point out to you, you're missing out. I, I tell people we even fry our desserts. But let's say that you, you enjoy that meal. Maybe go back to the dessert table one too many times. And somewhere around two o'clock in the afternoon, you get this, this sharp pain right here in your chest. It radiates down your arm. What do you do? Well, if you're wise, you go to a, a medical facility, a hospital, they, they check you out. Maybe they do a couple of tests. They realize uh, you're either about to have a heart attack. Maybe you're having one. Doctor looks at you and says, tell you what, I think we can put in a couple of stents, open those arteries up, you'll be good as new. You know, in, in that case, pain was actually a good thing. The last reason that I'm gonna give you, you probably won't like it all, and that is sometimes pain, suffering is illogical, meaning, we don't understand it today, but I want to make sure you understand God does know. He's still on his throne. He is still right where he was when Jesus Christ was nailed to a cross. And so while it may seem illogical to you today, God sees the, the big picture. If you have a Bible, let me encourage you. Turn to Judges chapter 6. And look at verse 13, where we find Gideon. 
lamenting this. He says, oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all of this happened to us? Here's Gideon. He, he's looking around. He's saying, why us? If God's with us, why us? I, I want to point out that verse to simply remind you, it, it's not wrong to question. You know, God, what, where are you right now? We need you. What we have to be careful of is how we respond to that. Do you allow that pain, that suffering to become a wedge to drive you away from God? Or are you going to allow the pain, the suffering in your life to draw you closer to him? It's my hope, my prayer that when you go through pain, suffering, that you'll realize that we live in a fallen world and that we need to be reconciled to God. And so rather than causing a wedge being further separated, let me encourage you, use that pain and lean on him. I hope you'll think, you'll pray on these things. Thank you. I don't know about tomorrow I just live from day to day I don't borrow from its sunshine for its skies may turn to gray I don't work for I know what Jesus said, and today I'll walk beside him, for he knows what is ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand but I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand every step getting brighter as the golden stairs I climb every burden's getting lighter every cloud is silver line there the sun shining. There no tear will dim the eye. At the ending of the rainbow, where the mountains touch the sky, many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand but I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand I don't know But the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who's
stands by me and the path that be my portion may be through the flame or flood but his presence goes before me and I'm covered with his blood. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know Time is filled with swift transition. Not of earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to His hand, to God's unchanging hand. Hold to His hand, to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal, hold to God's unchanging hand. Trust in Him who will not leave you, whatsoever years may bring. If by earthly friends forsaken, still more closely to Him cling. Hold to His hand, to God's unchanging hand. Hold to His hand, to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Covet not this world's vain riches that so rapidly decay. Seek to gain the heavenly treasures, they will never pass away. Hold to His hand, to God's unchanging hand. Hold to His hand, to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. When your journey is completed, if to God you have been true, fair and bright the home in glory, your enraptured soul will view. Hold to His hand, to God's unchanging hand. Hold to His hand, to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal, hold to God's unchanging hand. I hope you enjoyed our devotional this evening. I hope you enjoyed the songs that we sang, also Brother Harab's lesson. I'm excited that he's going to be coming, and Lord willing, in October to be with us, and we look forward to that time together. also want to encourage everyone to stay safe. Keep warm and be safe on the highways if you're out and having to be about and so forth. But this time, let's go to our Heavenly Father in a word of prayer as we close our time together this evening. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much that we can come and bow our heads before you. Father, thank you that we can call you the great God of heaven. And Father, thank you that we can learn from your word and we can also learn that you are in control and everything is in your hands, Father, and that we can hold on to you and we can have confidence in you, Father. Father, we're thankful that you care about us. 
Thankful, Father, that we can know your love through the sacrifice of Jesus. And Father, as we consider that great love, may we always realize how blessed we are in this life. Even if we don't have everything materially, if we have you, Father, we know that it is truly the greatest blessings of all. Father, we ask you to be with our sick, that it's on our list, Father, and that list is long, and pray that you'll be with each and every one of them, especially those, Father, who are seeking recovery from the COVID. Also, Father, we are thankful that you're caring for us and keeping us safe, but also, Father, we are thankful for the medical establishment that's able to provide care for our bodies. And Father, we know that sometimes our will is not your will, and folks, Father, will suffer and ultimately even lose their lives because of illness and disease, which we know, Father, all will die. So we pray, Father, you help us to understand and accept suffering and to realize, Father, that we can put our trust in you no matter what. And Father, we're thankful that we can have hope and that when our loved ones who are faithful to you die, we have that great hope that their Father resting in paradise. And Father, that's our goal. And be with us as we walk these days that you'll give us the courage and strength to turn away from evil and cling to you, Father. And Father, we're thankful that we can have assurance in you through Jesus Christ that died on that cross. Father, bless our time on this earth to serve you and may it be fruitful. Be with your church at Marshfield, help it to grow, prosper, and be with each and every member. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.